Life Audio. If you were following along with the devotional content in the She Hears Bible Study, today you're most likely on day five. But if you're not, that's okay. If you were ahead, that's okay. And if you're behind, that's okay. The key is to keep going. In all honesty, some people take more than one day to process some of the things that we're learning. For you, maybe it's the first time you've heard some of this stuff, or maybe it's something you just need to sit with for a while. I want you to know that this podcast content and the She Hears Bible Study is not going anywhere. And so if you need to listen to a certain episode once or twice or five times until you get it, that's okay and you're not alone. What I want you to know is that God's word, the goal of it is for it to sink in deep in your heart. So make it makes a difference, not just for what you think, but how you act and how you feel. So friend, be encouraged. Don't give up. You got this. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what he says in his word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach, and I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with Him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand His will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, and today we are finishing up day five of the chapter of Mary, the devotional content, and today we're talking about the witness. So John chapter two, verses one through 11. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does that have to do with us? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were six stone water pots set there for Jewish custom of purification, containing twenty or thirty gallons each. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water. So they filled them up to the brim, and he said to them, Draw some out now, and take it to the head waiter. So they took it to him. When the head waiter tasted the water, which had become wine and did not know where it had come from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, every man serves the good wine first. And when the people had drunk freely, then he serves a poorer wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. The beginning of his signs, Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. As you reflect on what Jesus did in this passage and how he worked and what we learned this week. I want you to pay attention to a couple of things and I want you to reflect back on things that we've been talking about as you consider the perspective of those people that were there that day. What role did Mary play? What example do we see in her words and her actions? And does that speak to you at all? And has it spoken to you at all this week? I would encourage you to share that on our Facebook community because as we learn together, God is glorified as we start to share this message within our circle of influence. What role did the servants play in the first miracle? And why do you think Jesus used them? And why do you think he uses us? How does that affect how we serve our, in our churches, in our families, in our marriages, in our friendships? There was some work involved in what Jesus asked the servants to do. And could he have done that work himself? Of course he could have. But God uses people because of what it will do for us, not because of what it will do for him. And so God chooses to use us to help us see what he is doing, to help us understand who he is. There's such a gift in that. The very first miracle that Jesus reveals publicly was revealed to those serving. And the ones that Jesus, the ones that know what Jesus is doing are the ones that are serving him. They see the miracle. The people that serve know that things are not what they once were because of who Jesus is. We talked about how the wedding um, had the wine being poured out to symbolize that Jesus longs to do something for us in our own life. The wine being poured out 
represents Jesus's completed action on the cross, on the cross, being poured out, covering our disgrace because he loves us. He was moved to action because of his love and he covers us so that no one even has to know what our lives would have been like had he not intervened. So for our final thoughts this week, I want to draw your attention to the disciples. They've been there this whole time and yet their presence remains silent until the very end. In verse 11, we finally hear from them. And it says that the disciples believed because of what they saw. Mary believed because of what she knew. It was her voice as a woman of authority that served as a witness to those that Jesus knew to be. But as you have studied this week, what is Jesus speaking to your heart? Just as Mary heard the same words that Jesus was speaking to her, I believe that Jesus wants to speak some of those words to you. And have you been listening? This is the heart check. What has he been saying throughout this week? Go ahead and pause if you need to, to just reflect on maybe some of the things that God has said to you this week. What he's calling you to. What he's calling you to lay down. What he's calling you to pick up. If your heart's clear, we're going to go through a couple points that I want you to remember as you meditate and think about this over the weekend. My prayer throughout this week is that as we've looked over some of these things, that there have been some things that have settled into your heart. And so Mary's role in the story, as we've studied throughout the week, it reveals so much to us about who Jesus is. So number one, the miracle of turning water into wine is the first time Jesus performs any public miracle or sign. That sometimes gets overlooked when you're simply just reading through the text. And so there's this theological concept we have. We talk about it in, uh, you know, seminaries and things like that. It's called the law of the first mention. And so to put it simply, it basically means that there's a special significance about the first time something is mentioned in scripture. And so it kind of sets the tone for the rest of the time that those types of scenarios are mentioned. And so the first time it's mentioned, it carries a little bit more weight. And so since this is the first miracle, this first public miracle that Jesus chose to reveal in public, at least to the servants, then we have to pay attention to what that significance carries. And so after studying this miracle all week, what do you think the significance is of this first public miracle of Cana? As you ponder that, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to finish talking about how Jesus calls us to radical faith. Stay tuned. I want you to think on that. The second thing I want you to think on is Jesus was invited. See, Jesus can't really produce a miracle for us if we don't first invite him into our lives. And so my question for you is, have you invited him in truly to every area of your life? And so I want you to take some time to really think on that. Have you invited him into those spaces? Or are there areas that you're keeping from him? The third thing I want you to think about is taking your problem to Jesus. So Mary didn't tell him what to do, and she didn't complain about what he didn't do. She didn't tell him what she was planning to do, or she didn't go ahead and do it and then ask him to bless it. She took him the problem. What do you need to take to him? And have you done that? And if not, I want you to do that this weekend, so spend some time doing that. Number four, Jesus calls us to radical faith and radical service. And so when Mary got it, the unexpected response, her faith, we see, does not waver. She acted in faith despite what she saw and what she heard. So there were no committees. There were no phone calls. There was no option. And I believe that the ones that are obedient right away are the ones that are in the best possible space to experience the hand of God, the miracle of God. They get to see what God is doing. They get filled to the brim. They work with excellence, not halfway. And then when we see something radical, it's um, this place of obedience that we've stepped out in faith. And then we are the witness of what God is doing. And that moment of miracle happens in God's timing. Not Mary's, not ours. But we get to see that when we are obedient. Have you responded when God asked something of you that you didn't expect or understand? If so, do you need to talk to him about that? Or do you need to reconcile your response? 
Number five, and this is the last one, he covers our disgrace. So his choice wine, as, as the scripture calls it, it covers our disgrace in the way that we don't even know. Before you were even born, your disgrace was covered by the very act of Jesus pouring himself out for you on the cross. Are there things that you're holding on to or a disgrace that you have? Are those things that you're keeping from him? He already knows them. He already knows. It's time to deal with them. So take some time to confess them so that he can cover them. Our example, Mary, as a woman of authority, she's obedient when she hears. That's my prayer for you too. Lord God, I pray for my friends that are studying your word this week and the example we have of Mary and the wedding. Lord God, I thank you that you are a God that covers our disgrace, that goes in and cleans out the things that we have been afraid to even reveal. Because you know, you always know. Lord, I pray that as you reveal things to my friend, that they would start to hand them over, even though it's difficult and hard, and invite you into those spaces that they thought were dead, that they thought were too messy, that as you started to reveal yourself, maybe you revealed some areas of their lives that they need to hand over. Lord God, I pray that you would give them the strength to be obedient. And that in those places that they just don't have the strength, that you would go in and you would snatch those things away from them. Lord God, we thank you that you are a God of mercy and tenderness and grace. Lord, I pray that you would continue to work in the life of my friends. I praise you for who you are and the way that you draw us to yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. I know you've been frustrated with being confident in how to tell the difference between hearing from God and wondering if it's your own voice. Listen, I know. I've been there myself. That's why I wrote the Bible study, She Hears, Learning to Listen to Jesus. This is a six-week study that takes you through the book of John, looking at six women in the life of Jesus. It also teaches the color method of Bible study, which helps you to learn how to really understand the scriptures. I include lots of cultural and historical information, and it really makes these familiar passages of scripture just come alive. This is a great study to do on your own, to do with some girlfriends or even some teenage girls, and it will help you really gain the confidence in how to hear from the Lord and set you up with some tools that will stay with you long after the study is over. You can find that on my resources page at shehears.org, where there are also some really good resources to help you in your spiritual growth. I pray that they are a blessing for you. I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on the podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call on your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His.